Hello, welcome to this video on analyzing your Quest app's performance using RenderDoc and practical improvements based on this later in Unity. So in this first part, I'll only talk about RenderDoc. Uh, so if you're using a different engine, this part is uh, still probably useful for you. So what you see here is RenderDoc. This is a specific version for Oculus. Uh, you can get this from the ODH. Uh, which is the Oculus Developer Hub, which is an excellent application uh, for managing your connection to your quest and what's on there. Uh, if you don't have it, definitely get it. Uh, it's on the Oculus uh, website. But if we want to be in Downloads, Tools, Render Doc for Oculus. Close this one real quick. Right. So this is Render Doc. We have two things we need to start with. There's the Launch Application tab. I initially didn't have this. I got this by going to Window Launch Application. So first we need to connect to our Quest. To do this, I go to Replay Context in the bottom left and click on the Oculus Quest. The first time it does this, it probably needs to install a package. Uh, I've already done this. Um, if you say Connect uh, and it doesn't say Remote Server Ready, like it failed or something, it could be that either your Quest is turned off didn't turn on or um, you don't have tracking just make sure it's ready and prepared um, so I made a build in unity and it automatically started that's actually not what you want because it needs to restart the application with the context of uh, render doc for analyzing it so I have connected now and in my quest there is just a black screen with three dots so it's it's prepared for um, receiving a command from RenderDoc. So in launch application, I will go to executable path, which should open. Yeah, just takes a little bit to load. So I want to go to uh, where are you? Crash Collective. So this would be your own application uh, based on on you know what you. Uh, put in project settings. So I'm gonna tell it to uh, launch now. I've got it casting. Hope I don't bump the microphone now. take a little bit to load. Right. So now I'm in my application uh, and I think you can see the performance. Yes. So the performance right now says uh, 40, 42, 36. Um, if you're running this application without render doc running, uh, the performance be a lot, will be a lot higher, but because we have a big overhead from uh, render doc, it's normal that it's a bunch lower. It's 72 usually. So we want to, I, I want to analyze this. Oh, oh, yeah, there we go. I want to analyze, I want to analyze this scene. Uh, so I'm going to find one place to stand, to consistently stand, because we're going to do comparative snapshots every time we make an improvement so we want to make sure it's always the same keep your hands in the same position i'm resting them on my on my chair um, now in uh, render doc i am just looking past my eye <laughs> uh, so it automatically opened a new tab for us and there is a button to capture frame immediately so make sure that you're looking the right way that you want and click capture. So it's taking the frame that we want now. We can see here there's a frame cap uh, captures collected. So I always make sure that I save this. Um, you might want to name it appropriately if you have a, like a plan like oh, before improvements or something like that. Okay, so we're going to open this, and it's going to open it with the Oculus Quest context. If you're opening this 
from the saved file later it'll ask you if you want remote or local chances are it won't even open if it's on uh, local you always want to make sure that the quest is set as the context and it can take a while so I'll be back with you when this finishes loading all right it finished loading uh, a few hours ago spent a bunch of time talking my to myself but forgot to press record <laughs> so this is a snapshot loaded up in render doc for oculus um, there are several things in the UI here there's the timeline there's the event browser and there's all these tabs here the timeline I was initially confused by but it has nothing to do with actual time so I don't feel like it's useful to our analysis here but these that is this is based on like um, a render event in this is or something I don't know what to do with that uh, so what is useful what has been useful to me has been uh, the event browser uh, and these tabs but first we're gonna switch I'm gonna switch over to the other version of render doc the basic one because we're supposed to be able to see the duration of events if you press here but it'll only give me for the entire uh, like uh, the duration of the entire frame um, that's not useful so I'm not sure if you will have to do this but I will uh, I'm switching over to the normal one and uh, you can download this from there uh, from a render doc website make sure you press remote uh, okay so we're gonna press this button and you see uh, now it's giving us a nice overlay uh, overview and every time I press uh, it changes the numbers this is an estimate this is not accurate but it's good enough for our analysis. So you have uh, everything that's happened in the frame that the GPU has been doing, including some mesh skinning, um, frame invalidates. I think that's like preparing the uh, the render texture. Oh no, it's much quicker <laughs> when I'm not recording and I'm getting all these loading screens. Okay, so the main thing we can impact is camera that render, specifically three parts of that. So there's the render opaque geometry, the camera render skybox, and the uh, transparent geometry. Since we're not having any like post effects on on quest one or two, well, unless you really well optimized, <laughs> um, then you're probably not watching this video. <laughs> okay, so we have the opaque geometry, it's twenty four thousand microseconds. And the transparent 17,000 because I've got a bunch of particles and UIs here it's pretty high I think usually you want to have it a little lower than that but it, it still performs pretty well but we have some improvements to do so you will see so you see every time I click on a stage here it'll uh, update the output based on what's already rendered at that point so you see, um, so you see here, uh, draw elements. Um, that is draw, gonna draw something, a mesh with six verts. Here it's gonna draw a mesh with four thousand six hundred and eight verts. You can also see how long it takes. Now you can um, compare, like, why why did it take three hundred and four microseconds for four verts, and why did it take 235 for 4608 verts I don't immediately know but you can find out by just looking through all the information that you get this is some kind of combined mesh uh, using two unity white textures and a light map I don't immediately know what this means like I'm not an expert but there's just some things that I've found found out that improve performance by just looking at these things. Now most of these high vert counts are actually combined static meshes because they're marked static and the you know, the GPU decided to render them together. This is probably one of these if it'll show me. Right, uh, you can use the overlay mode highlight draw con and you can it'll show in magenta what it actually drew in this frame usually it's being a little temperamental because I'm recording now oh <laughs> I'm 
sorry. <laughs> I didn't call you temperamental, no, no. Okay. You see this, uh... This is like this door, there's a bunch of these rockets and some tubes. One of this rocket. Now, wouldn't it be cool? Oh, actually, this is... Yeah, that makes sense that it's so high. This is such a high amount of the actual screen. So that was the other one. Wouldn't it be cool if it drew all these rockets together? Because you know, they're the same mesh. They're the same material. They they have the same texture because these are all Atlas together. Um, it's actually happening with some things. Namely, here. It's Elements Instance. That means that it has drawn several meshes at the same time um, because it uses the GPU instancing feature. The material needs to support this. For example, the, the Unity Standard shader supports it. So what you see here is three rockets, uh, four rockets. If we go in here, it's actually four of these. And why is it drawing these four together? We don't know. It shouldn't. I guess it was <laughs> just incidental, but we can make sure it does um, by marking them as not batching static. Did you see that the warning disappeared here? This is a warning if you mark something as batching static, but the material has a GPU instancing enabled. So it's deciding to not GPU instance because we're saying batch statically. Um, so it's, it tries to combine this mesh with other things. But we want to guide it and tell it we have a whole bunch of these rockets. Just draw them all at the same time. So what we can do is uh, search for all the mis missiles. So these are all clusters of four. So that's a whole bunch of them. So we're just going to say not batching static. Yes, the children because the mesh is uh, like also this band and I, uh, uh, this should be, yeah, this is the same mesh. Uh, so you can make improvements like that to um, make the GPU render things at the same time. For example, there's also, if I haven't already done it, these boxes, these crates, yeah. So I'm gonna find all the crates those are different crates. These, yeah, these are all the same mesh. That's good. I'm going to mark them as not batching static. Um, and then there's something about the way this level is actually made. This level is uh, put together in 3ds Max. Oh, that tries to... Okay, so I'll show you. So this is the level put together in 3ds Max. And if you import something like this from 3ds Max, it'll export everything as a separate sub mesh. So if you see here, like these are all the same mesh. There's so many of the same things. For example, you have this tube. It's a cylinder 306 mesh, cylinder 306, 307. But it's the same thing. So if we select all of these, oh, no, not the floor. And there's some up here as well. So this, this really depends on your workflow, but if you exp export a whole pre-constructed level like this from a 3D package, then there'll be se usually be separate objects unless you figure something out against that. So I tend to always get make sure I pick the first one. See, looks exactly the same. But now, when we mark these as not batching static, uh, the GPU can render all eight, uh, 16 of these in one go. Um, of course, there's like other separate things, but I'm not gonna, uh, like other instances where this happens in this level, like all the door frames maybe the doors and this console and that console but I'm not gonna over go over everything separately but in that way you can uh, improve your performance so I'm gonna do another snapshot now and we can compare the two 
All right, back in render dock, I've made some more um, static batching improvements. I made a build and made a new snapshot. I sent the press a few times <laughs> just to see it jiggle. Uh, we'll go back and look at our opaque geometry again. And we've got a few more instances happening now. Still not as many as I'd like. Um, but it is drawing a bunch of instant stuff together. Let's see if we uh, can actually find the rockets happening. No. 60. That's a lot. 612? That was rockets, right? Yeah, here we are. See? Uh, 60 rockets, 460 microseconds. That's all we wanted to achieve. This might be the bands around. Yeah, these are the bands. This could potentially be the pipes. So you don't want to do this um, static batching. Yeah, these are the pipes. You don't want to do this um, GPU instances with everything because static batching works for things. Like this entire ceiling and floor is one object. You don't want to GPU instance it because there isn't many of them. Um, so what I would also do is you see these all these ropes like they're they're kind of uh, wires they're that's a lot uh, I would probably put this in a quest two only folder um, which I have is somewhere here so I have a quest two only folder which I would put things in. Mm. Ah, oh, stupid UI. So I would probably take these two. Oh, can I get them to come along? <laughs> so I have a script. I think it's on level info. Yeah. So I wrote just wrote a little script device dependent events. If we're on quest one, then it'll turn uh, the quest two folder off. It's probably not the ideal way of doing it um, because it'll still load it at the start of the scene but it was just more convenient because uh, we often ended up f forgetting to turn the folder on for quest 2 uh, and this script is pretty simple just uh, on awake check if it's a specific headset type so that's one way you can increase performance but just putting objects uh, in a folder like that uh, and I think that's basically it you can go through this further just seeing what you can do what you can group together but at some point you've reached most of what you can do and you'll need to look at other things. If I needed to optimize this scene further, I would probably look at the transparent stuff, uh, like the like these, and the particle effects, and the um, yeah. Basically, we need the UI. We can't really turn that off. But some particle effects and such are moved over to the Quest Two folder. Um, grouping sprites together this is these are some of these are separate sprites these really should be uh, together on a, on a hud like this instead then they can be batched that's the reason that the we have all a bunch of sub uh, sub batches these would be all grouped much better together 
if the UI was on one lat less. Of course, with some things, it's not going to work because of the text. Uh, that'll be text mesh pro text, which doesn't seem to batch very well. Uh, another tip for batching, if you want to have something be one color, this one, for example, we're just using light green here. Um, oh, this one, yeah. Nope, cut that out. Okay, um, I think that's about it that I wanted to talk about. Uh, I hope this has helped you understand render doc a little bit better and how you can use it to understand what's happening on the device uh, and how you can leverage that uh, good luck